This tutorial will show you how to use a form with a combo box to filter the results of a form um, or a report depending on how you have it set up. And the way this is built would be you will start off with tables. These are the tables that we have in our database. Uh, pretty basic. These are the relationships. You don't have to have the relationships as long as you can run a query between the tables. Uh, the data in here is just for test purposes. And here's our information. And the final result will be we'll have a form generated off of a dashboard or off of somewhere in our database that will open up and we'll have a drop down menu. And we'll be able to select one of the options from a table. And this particular combo box is set up to filter from the client table. So if we select client 2 and activate, it will find the accounts receivable amount for that client. And we can hook this to multiple sets of information, um, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we will stay with uh, the basic information. So to start off building this, we'll have our, our uh, tables, and we'll, we will want to create a query. And the way this query is set up is with the relationships between these three tables. And whatever information you want from your query will be the information that will be used to filter. And as you can tell, the filter is built into the area of the query. So if we were to take this out and run this query, this is what will populate. So we now know that we want to see our client name, the job attached, and the amount attached. So if we open this back up into this view, if we want to filter by client ID, client ID is going to be what is attached to our form. So even though this box shows test and test2, it's going to be attached to ID1 and ID2. So for the purpose of this tutorial, say we want to filter it by job name. We'll place job ID in our query and we'll run this. So now you see that job ID shows up and job name shows up. And job name is very similar to client ID so let's put test job to get rid of any confusion. So now, if we open this back up in Design View, and come up here to Create, we want to create a blank form. You want to save the form as Job Form 1. You can save it however you want to save it, but we'll save it under this name for this tutorial. Open the form in Design View, and you'll notice that there's nothing on the form. It's completely blank. And what we want to do is put a button, leave this blank, and then put a combo box. And the easiest way to do this is to use the wizard and go to I want the combo box to get the values from another table or query. And we want this to come from the job table. And you'll notice that if you want to filter this by job name, you'll also want the ID. And you can put it in whatever order that you want to put it in. Uh, you can select hide key column. If you unselect this, it will show up in your combo box with both options. So we'll leave that at hide just to keep it with one column in the combo box. And you can save it in the system however you want to save it. When you're finished, you will have a combo box that is unbound. So if we open this up and form view, You'll notice that the two jobs are there, but nothing really happens. So now if we open this up in Design View, go to Properties, and your Property tab will be over here on the right-hand side of your screen. It's like the Unbound Combo Box, not the text box, but the Combo Box. And the name of this Combo Box is Combo1. So if you go back to your query, what we want to do is we want to filter our job ID 
by whatever is in the combo box. So criteria, forms, place an exclamation point behind forms. It will give you the option of all the forms in the database. Job forms one and combo one. So if we save this and put it in a different view, you'll notice nothing's in here. Now this is the best way to test that this is working. And the way to do this would be to open up job form one and put this into form view. Come down here and te uh, put test job one, or just select one of the options out of your combo box. Go back to the query and press F5. And F5 regenerates the query according to the criteria, and you'll see that the information populates as it needs to be populated. So now that we know this is working, leave the job form and the query loaded and go to the query client or whatever the name of your query would be and what you want to do is go to create and select form and a form will populate with all the information that is in your query. Now you obviously don't want all of this information in your form I guess it depends on the purpose of your form so for the purpose of this tutorial we will remove the automatically out of the box setup and say we want to put in here some combo box or some text boxes you'll be able to assign this to different data types so if we want client name if we want job name if we want amount we can delete these other two. So this will give us a way to filter this form. So if we save this And close. You can go ahead and close the query. And then on job form one, go back down to the combo box, go to build event, macro builder, select open form, and select job form one or whatever the name of your form is. Um, this gives you the option if you want the reader to be able to read it, edit to add. You can change these settings later. You can lock boxes. That's That'll be a different tutorial. So we'll open this up in dialog view. So if we close this now, we close the client. If we come down here to job form one and go to test job two, must not have saved. something is it working with it so other than our button not working if we open up query client 2 form you notice that it filters with test job 2 that's our problem We're opening up the wrong form go back to build event and change the form So if you were to open up this form now, go to test job, select the command button, it will open up the form 
and filter out whatever information you're wanting to filter out. And this is useful if you want to have several forms to filter different features within a database depending on whatever the function of your database is. It's good for uh, keeping it user friendly and building controls in the database if you want to report through a form and have everything locked. It's a good way to filter. Hope this was helpful and please check out other tutorials.